Good morning and welcome to This Is Qatar, episode number six. And I am absolutely thrilled to have my mentor We're in the podcast world. <laughs> Look at your face. Sorry, I nearly, I nearly choked then. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan no, Lindbergh-Jones, it is so good to see you. And it is actually quite exciting to have you on the other side of the podcast for a change. Because I've done four, four I think over the past uh, four or five years, four podcast episodes with you. And I've finally got the chance to ask you questions back. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've, just, uh, I've just finished a couple of hours of homeschooling, so I'm just a little bit shell salt. So just uh, bear, <laughs> with me. bear with me. I've got my coffee. So I, this is the first <laughs> time I've been able to sit by myself. Fair enough. But, fair enough. How is uh, how is Ramadan uh, treating you, and how is uh, working from home treating you? I think the two tend to tend to have blended over the past uh, six to eight weeks. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, maybe. Am I allowed to uh, show you my cup of coffee? Um, that, Ramadan. Yes. <laughs> Ramadan. I had, I didn't realize. Well, not that I didn't realize, but I I've known that Ramadan is going on, but uh, it. It hasn't affected us because we're we're at home. You know, we're we're yep. not able to go out and um, enjoy going to restaurants or shopping or anything like that. So um, no, it's it's just it's been the norm, behind. hasn't it? Yeah, it's been the norm yeah. for the past uh, for the past uh, six to six to eight weeks, and, and probably will be for. I'm hearing that we're going to be moving into July before anything starts to starts to relax itself, but. Uh, the time will tell and uh, we'll get there eventually. Um, my wife and, and possibly your wife have, um, have come to terms with the fact that the children will most likely not go back to school until September, maybe even a little bit longer. Um, I think my wife is keen. <laughs> I don't mind. I come to the office to get work done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not allowed to do that. <laughs> I've set, I've set up office here. I'm in the hallway upstairs on our landing. Oh, really? On the landing? Well, no, I oh. st we started downstairs. So we started on the dining room table. And then my wife didn't like the fact that we were working from the dining room table. So then she went and bought a big table from Ikea so we could all be on that table. And then, no, I was interrupting them when they were doing homeschooling. So I got pushed upstairs. It's always the same, isn't it? We always have to sacrifice well, now, now, I, now I can understand why men have that retreat in the garden shed. I could never understand yeah. it when I was younger. It's yeah. just like, why are you sitting in a garden shed at the end of a garden? Because you've been banished. <laughs> you've been banished. And also, it's a, it's a place to escape. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, have you found that, uh, and this, I might be answering the, asking the wrong question here, but I've certainly found I've been more productive. Have you been more productive in, in lockdown or not? Um, no, actually it's, it's been great. No, I, I know I was laughing before, but I, this has been a great eye opener for me because, um, I really appreciate the time that I've spent with the kids. It's brought our family together. All right. At the beginning, it, it was a lot to get our heads around and, uh, there was a few arguments, uh, with me and my wife, but once that got all sorted out, it, it's just been it's been brilliant. It's just, and so that's kind of made, opened my eyes in the fact that I'm not going to spend all my life in the office. I am going to work from home if I can a lot of the time, uh, spend a little bit, bit of time in the office and then, uh, you know, work from c coffee shops when they do open. Yeah. And, yeah, and I'm going to, I'm going to be there for the kids. I'm going to, you know, I, my routine uh, before all this happened was to take the kids to school and then I would go on to work. But now I'll take the kids to, to school and then I'll pick them up afterwards, do a bit of homework with them, spend some quality time with them and then uh, go on and do some other work. But uh, yeah, this, is, this has been great for me. I think I, I was always the kind of person that tended to not have the routine of, of eight till five or eight till six. But I think this has kind of further established the fact that there isn't really a working day. There isn't a daytime hours you no. can you can get up at, i mean you're up you're up very early with your walks and your videos and your meditation and i'm 
really enjoying you know uh, watching those and seeing how your uh, how your how your growth is still occurring because you're still learning um, absolutely and you you are a genuinely you are an inspiration we've known each other for a long time and to see what you do uh, and how you constantly change you're always as I say you're always trying to educate yourself which is fantastic um, and I am trying to follow um, in in your footsteps um, all jokes aside we we spoke about podcasts probably for about six years yeah and I could never understand why 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 is he doing a podcast what where's the monetary value you know, this is so much effort. there is no so money there is no money <laughs> but it's a it's I think it's a good release I think Absolutely. it's a good opportunity and there's so many opportunities now not just with technology but with the fact that people are having to work remotely and are having meetings uh, on Zoom or on Microsoft Teams or, or, or Google Meet etc and it's I've spoken to pretty much every one of my guests I've spoken to about how are things changing their working habits how are things changing them at home as you say, bringing people together. It's a bit of a reset, which is fantastic. I've, I've not quite got there because there's a lot of things going on and it's, and it, and it's busy and, and productivity-wise, it's gone through the roof. And I'm not actually getting home any earlier, which is rather, rather frustrating. Um, yeah, but do you have but to be eventually, able, do you have to sit there? Do you have to sit there in the office? You know, have you not got a laptop where you can, you know, go on the, the balcony and uh, work from there. Is it just an excuse for you to get that mind space of Possibly. being in the office? Possibly. Well, then, just, then it's, you know, because at the end of the day, it's up to you. It's, it's where you yeah, feel yeah. comfortable working, but you can work from home if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. I think it's, a, it's certainly a comfort factor as well. Um, I think the productivity wise, I'd rather maybe spend six hours in the office doing the work and then getting home, getting home early yeah. rather than spending, spending the day at home. Um, you know, the, the children are doing, I think the only person that's probably enjoying this lockdown is my wife. She's getting to, uh, she's getting to reintroduce herself to her teaching ways, um, which she hasn't done, you know, since uh. the children came along five years ago. Yeah. Um, so, and uh, maybe enjoying is probably the wrong word, but it's certainly a, <laughs> a reminder uh, of what's, uh, what's going on. But the, the children are, it's such intense work, you know, the planning that's coming through from the teachers. And it's such a, an intense sort of three hours uh, of which it's only Katie and, and Oscar that are getting the attention. Whereas if you're in a class, you've got 20 to 24 kids, you've got intermittent attention. They get a bit of time to themselves, whereas it's pure focus. And my, oh, it's wife is very, my wife is but very it, organized. Yeah, so is mine. But what's opened our eyes is the fact that, and I, I don't know if, if you feel the same, but um, what they're actually teaching the kids. Is it half of the stuff, is it, is it really necessary? Mm. And, and two, have we not come along... Uh, since our, our school days to where we are now and learn about uh, the world and stuff like that. Surely there should be other subjects that get introduced, but it's not. It's the same old factory that's churning out students and they're not really introducing them to the world no. properly. And I, I think the whole isn't, isn't that just the, Isn't that just the school society? Isn't, isn't a school a conveyor belt so that our children it can 95% of the time basically maintain the economy from a UK perspective, for example, it is to get people into teaching jobs, into, um, I don't know, into law, into accountancy, into these professions that keep the economy and keep the society churning. Absolutely. And when you've got individuals such as ourselves that break that mold and have a different way of thinking, and say, well, what about business etiquette? Or what about um, entrepreneurship? Or what about yeah. money? Money what is about money? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. What about money? Tell us about the mortgage that everyone has to face when they leave and they want to buy a house. Why aren't you teaching that? Get a teacher that, well, yeah. but maybe the teachers don't have that experience. That's why I always say to well, my- they don't, because uh, they're not entrepreneurs. <laughs> that's, no. That's the point. No, exactly. I'm going to ask you a really direct question, and I hope my wife doesn't listen to this. Um, does your wife get it? Does she get what? 
entrepreneurship and out of the box thinking and not being on that conveyor belt? Because uh, mine doesn't. No, it, take, it takes them a lot, a lot of years to get, get their head around it. Because really, if you think about it, our wives are, are the ones that keep us, keep our feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. um we're we're the we're the we're the dreamers we're the we're the risk we're the risk take takers and our wives literally pull us back down and go hold on hello if darling you... i've got a brilliant idea and she goes oh no not another not another one <laughs> absolutely um so so i respect that but um no my wife has recently after over the last couple of years um she she loves doing interior design for herself. So she's kind of, uh, you know, word of mouth has got out there. So they have, people have asked her to do some interior design. So she knows what it's like to deal with clients. She knows what it's like mm. to do with uh, people not paying, et cetera, et cetera. So she understands now what I've had to go through. And also she's uh, started a venture where um, she's um, selling uh, gift cards. Um, just from the house for now, just to see if there's a market, but you know, that might take off. So she's excited about that. So there's a little bit, I think the entrepreneurship has rubbed off on her and now she's, she gets it, but she, she does, but she does appreciate, you know, the full time job and what the security brings, mm. but then she understands that it's boring. It's, uh, yeah. but it yeah but it is security oh, at the end of the day it is it is have you how long have you been so ginger camel was 2011 yeah 2011 so uh so yeah. nine years nine in year. that nine years have you ever thought you know what i'm just going to go back to al jazeera this is too hard no uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no. I did twenty. I did twenty years in broadcasting, and I was. Uh, okay. still, my job was literally a transmission controller, so I was watching people live their lives. And I vowed that one day, I wanted to live my life. I couldn't sit here in a chair because you're not appreciated. You're just you're a bum on a seat, and you do shift works, and then you leave, and then someone else replaces you, mm. and. Um, you know, you could be anyone. And I saw the old guys in transmission and I just thought, no, I'm not going to be like that. I cannot do this job. There's other people that just use it for what it is and, you know, took the money and then they would have a life outside of their job. But for me, that wasn't the way I was. I wanted a job that was fulfilling and, uh, you know, was, was going to be different every single day where transmission was literally, okay. You were babysitting a computer, basically. Okay. Yeah, so mundane, no. mundane Groundhog Day. No, that's fair enough. Yeah, so, and, so, my and, wife and winds, so my wife winds me up uh, sometimes. She says, oh, you know, if this doesn't work, then you'll have to go back to uh, transmission. And, uh, and he's just like, no, never. It's a reminder. It's a yeah. reminder. Uh, yeah. um, so many things that, that, that we can talk about. And, you know, we, I, I would love to talk to you for hours and hours. But let's, let's chalk off a couple of simple ones. So you are... English and Swedish for the viewers yeah, that don't know who mom's you Swedish. are. Yeah, mum's Swedish, dad's English. Uh, I say English, but he, he would always be proud of his Cornish roots. So he, he right. loved the fact that, you know, Celtic and uh, all that, not English, but uh, yeah. We'll, we'll come on to it in a bit, but I've got a, a quick fire round of between okay. Sweden and England. So you're not allowed to think about it. You're just going to say the answers, but we'll come on to that in a few minutes. Um, Genuinely, I was really chuffed for you. I can't believe it was four years ago already, but uh, when you won the Businessman of the Year, I actually was, I was there. And, uh, and I remember letting out a little yelp. I was like, yes, amazing. <laughs> I was really chuffed for you. Um, so congrats on that. QBBF Businessman of the Year in 2016. Tell me a bit more about the, uh, the Can Award and what was the film about? That's an amazing achievement as well. When was that? And tell us a bit about what uh, the award was for. What was the production? Yeah, it was... Um... Uh, it was funny, actually, because I was away on holiday when uh, QPost got in... No, it wasn't actually QPost that got in contact with us. It was uh, ICT Qatar that got in contact with us and said, oh, we need a promotional video to explain to people how QPost is going to develop and become this modern-day uh, postal system. And uh, they called in the team when I was on holiday. I think it was in the summertime. And they said, look, we've only got... 
we're, we're doing this for QPOS and we've only got like a month to produce this video. And we want it to be, you know, 3D animation and we want it with live filming as well. So, so the 3D animation looks like it's already in place. You know, the whole system of the postal system is in place. So you've got all this uh, laser beam um, reading the barcodes and it's going on these conveyor belts and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, when I came back from holiday, I came into the meeting with uh, ICT Qatar and they, she was explaining it and um, what my guys were saying, yeah, yeah, no problem. And I walked out and went, really? We can do this? <laughs> In the time that you're, you're saying we can do this? And he said, yeah, no, no, no problem. And uh, yeah, we pulled it off. It was, it was amazing. I think it was like seven days of, um, or maybe it was about three or four days of filming, real filming around uh, Doha because you had to show the, the ordering online and then the actual delivery. Um, and then in between, we did this whole 3D um, animation uh, with, with the whole um, lasers and stuff like that. And um, yeah, we delivered on time. So then we uh, put it uh, for some awards and we put it in for Cannes. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we got a Silver Dolphin Award uh, for that uh, project. And uh, yeah, it was, it was the proudest moment. So we, me, my wife and the producer, Najwa at the time, um, went, uh, stayed in Cannes, um, which was amazing. We stayed in one of those, one of, one of the famous hotels. I can't remember what it's called. And uh, just lived the experience of uh, going to the dinner and uh, picking up that award. It was amazing. It's a beautiful place. I've been, oh, the, the entire south coast of France, you know, yeah. the Zur, Monaco, Cannes, Antibes, St. Paul de Vance. It's a, it's a stunning part of the world. Yeah. Um, which, I, which I enjoy visiting. But um, that's a, it's an amazing achievement. Um, you know, just going back to, to the fact that, you know, we've known each other since I pretty much landed. Uh, I think you've been here longer than I have, 2008. I think you were about 2006. Yeah, 2006. Um, and we, then we, uh, met, we, we met at QB, did we meet at QBBF? Must, be. Uh, must yeah. be QBBF, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then obviously, yeah, so so I was I was the hippie I was the hippie in in a in a brown suit and Simon was this dashing tall uh, in a oh tall, stop you know stop. Bit, bit, well spoken bit of a, well spoken a, posh Scottish man <laughs> bit of a lad you know say all I, sales I resemble that and, comment and this was my first introduction to business because I'd never been in business um, and it was just like oh god you know. Oh no, yeah. the, are, these the, are these the people I've got to deal with? Oh my God, well, look where in, you are now. You're all in black suits. And it, it was just like, there was a thing <laughs> the one that stood out with uh, blonde peroxide, long, blonde, long hair and a brown No tie, suit. no tie. No tie. No, nice and cash, yeah. Bit of a waistcoat from time to time. <laughs> yeah, quite right, quite right. And then yeah. when, when obviously you went into business, I went into business um, or, or I, moved, I moved office. So we shared an office for about 18 months, maybe 20 months and saw each other's businesses uh, grow and, and flourish and go through the tough times and the challenging times. But I don't think uh, we've experienced times like that. Well, we haven't experienced times like this. Um, how's the last eight weeks been from a business um, perspective? Because you're in a very, very competitive industry. Um, you're in a very physical industry as well, in which, uh, you know, at the end of the day, your productions require uh, imagery and video production on site, which is nigh on impossible uh, now. The podcasts are continuing to go in exactly the same way as this is. How have you found things and, and where do you think things are going to go for your industry uh, going forward when we come out slowly from this, from this situation? Well, uh, last year was my best year. With, it, with all the years of doing business, last year was fantastic. It was our best year ever. Um, biggest sales. And then when we went into January, we were told by a few clients that their budgets have been cut. So we, we immediately, because we experienced a really downturn 2016, 2017, and uh, we struggled through those years. So when, this, when we got the indication that this was going to be a tough year, I immediately started to um, take action so we so we were sitting in a big office uh you know we were our rent was uh well it was 372 square meters and it was we were paying like 33,000 
a month. And so that's the first thing that I'm looking at. I'm like, like right, I've got to downsize. I've got to, I've got to um, get a smaller office. So I'm, I'm already in end of January, beginning of February, looking for a smaller office. Uh, because I'm thinking, look, I'm not here. I'm not sitting in this big office. If my clients, great, they were, they were using me last year uh, with all my services, with the studio space, et cetera. Um, but when they decide or their company decide that they're slashing their budgets, uh, the pro- there's not going to be much production. So I've got to, I'm not going to sit here spending so much money waiting uh, for those productions to come along. So, so be it. I've got to, I've got to find a smaller office. If it's going to be for a year, it's going to be for a year. So when, <laughs> and also I'm listening to podcasts and they're, they're saying this year was going to be the year where there was going to be uh, an, an economic downturn. There's going to be another 2008 uh, financial crisis. So I'm listening to this um, in the podcast as well. So I'm thinking, okay, right. Budgets have been slashed. I'm hearing that there's going to be an economic crisis. So I'm more, yeah, I'm, I'm in action mode already. Then this virus comes along and it's just like, well, okay, well, I'm already downsizing. I'm doing the things that I should be doing. So it just went hand in hand. So we were already prepared. So then when uh, we had to work from home, um, that, was, that, that was a bonus for me because um, we had already downsized. I, I, just got an, I just got a desk. I registered Ginger Camel at Surfcore. I literally have got one of those name plaques, Ginger Camel. That's where my company is registered and all my guys nice. are working from home. So I've saved a lot. I've saved a lot of money in that respect. We didn't have much work January and February compared to the previous year. So um, when the virus kicked in, suddenly we got all this work because they, um, ministries needed videos to needed let, communication let know, to the public. Yeah, what was going on. So um, our clients got in contact with us. We were producing a few videos. So suddenly it all took off. So that was good for us. But then once that demand uh, subsided, businesses close their hatches because they were dealing with their own crisis. They were dealing with what, uh, well, what, how are we going to cope with this? How, how having to put their own systems in place. So they weren't reaching out, sending inquiries about videos. They were literally pulled down the hatches and literally our inbox had gone dead for about two weeks where there was hardly any inquiries, maybe two to three weeks, no inquiries. So I literally turned to the team and said, look, we can't be reactive anymore. We have to be proactive. We have to throw out ideas to our clients and potential clients on how they can use video as a tool to get their message out there and let the public know what their business is doing um, in this time of crisis and that they're still around or they're, they're, they're changing the way they operate. Let's come up with creative ideas. So we created this drop, Dropbox paper and literally the whole team were writing, writing ideas down. Um, and then I used that to get in contact with the clients and say, hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And sometimes we get positive reactions. Sometimes we didn't hear anything. And sometimes it was just like, no, not at the moment. Maybe when this is all over, we think about doing something. So um, where, I'm, where I'm at now is, is the fact um, I, I try to go as long as I could to keep my whole team. Um, but it's, it's just impossible. So I've had to release half my team, but they're still on, they're, they're still on my RP. They're still on contract, um, but it's up to them if they want to uh, find other work. Mm-hmm. Um, and if the business does pick up, um, then whenever that, that is, then they're, open, they're welcome back with open arms. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm struggling uh, because there isn't much work out there now. Um, we are, is there much opportunity to diversify? I know you were speaking about ideas and video production and marketing, social media, podcasts. What, what potential opportunities are there for you to move in different directions? Well, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm helping my wife now, but, um, for the company, we're just, uh, still coming up we you have to look at yourselves as well. We, we were, in the process of building a new website. So that has, that is now essential that we get that finished and out there. 
we're doing a new show reel. Um, and then we still keep on knocking on the doors with creative ideas. The one thing that we did pick work, on, work, work up on was uh, we got in contact with the universities and schools with the graduation because they're not able to happen. So we, we won two contracts with one university and one school where we created this virtual uh, graduation where mm -hmm. there's, uh, real foot, there's footage that students have shot as well as um, like a 3D animation of the uh, presentation hall with the screen and then videos of the teachers come and uh, they, they thank their students and they give uh, little testimonials. Um, so we've been busy the last two weeks doing that for the university and the um, school that, that we want to contract. So there might be potential if there's any uh, more graduations coming up I don't know if they've all finished or if schools and universities have sorted themselves out. I know some have delayed till the end of the year. So that potentially there could be an opportunity for us to uh, fill that gap if they, if they can't happen. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it's literally just watching uh, what other countries are doing, what other companies are doing um, in getting their messages, messages out there. I know uh, there's a lot of social media companies that are offering cheap videos uh, which we can't really, because we still have to keep our standard and we still have to keep our kind of our, our, our costing. Um, yeah. So there's, there's a limit how low we can go. <clears throat> there's, a, there's an element, yeah, there's, a, there's an element that can be reduced. If your overheads are reduced and your team is reduced, then yes, the proportionality yeah. is there. Um, obviously, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Jeffrey Asselstein, was, um, was on the podcast last week. And ironically, I think he was on the week before me when, when I did, uh, when I did um, uh, your, your podcast a few months ago, a couple of months ago. We were talking about virtual tours. We were talking about the real estate market where um, less people with the current situation will want to uh, visit uh, premises and uh, apartments and villas uh, as often. Uh, we're in such a transient market that people are still constantly coming and going. They're looking for better deals on rent because at the end of the day, they're throwing money away. Is there an opportunity from a real estate perspective to utilize your skills uh, and, and offer the, the virtuality uh, tours that, um, that certain landlords or developers might be able to utilize uh, to give their, give their tenants and their buyers a, a better experience? Oh, there is. And, there, and a lot of real, real estate companies are doing that, but they're not doing it to the quality and the standard yeah. that we would produce. And they don't want to pay the money that we would charge. Uh, so they, they are doing that with phones and with, um, you know, the small little uh, handheld gimbals that you, can, and, yeah, yeah. that you can do. Um, we're helping one of the real estate companies to uh, produce a promo because I've got my son here. Um, so he's uh, learning and uh, doing a, Video he was helping uh, you with your podcast productions. Yeah, right? so he, yeah. he's uh, helping this real estate company to produce a little promo and uh, maybe there's a potential where we can, you know, it's a startup real estate company. So we're just helping them get their feet on the ground and uh, get themselves running. Um, and then maybe there's a potential in uh, partnering up with them. But it won't, be, it won't be under Ginger Camel because Ginger Camel has a reputation of being expensive. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Always, always looking for, uh, you know, you know me, I've always tried to help yeah. startups and, um, yeah. and SMEs, um, SMEs. And, and SMEs are in the position similar to yourself in which, you know, I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to dive, I've, I've got fit out projects. I've got, I've actually got some, a villa project at the moment and a lot of furniture and ergonomic requirements because of home working, remote working. Uh, social distancing, there's now some, some social screens within the desking. So we're doing a lot of mail campaigns with regards to this, but we're, we're trying to throw ourselves into the social media um, aspect and keeping ourselves out there, whether it be content, education, whether it be podcasts, whether it be talking points and uh, industry challenges, uh, taking a situation and trying to improve it and remaining at the forefront of people's minds, whether it's, as someone once said to me, there's no such thing as bad PR. If you're no. at the forefront of someone's mind, then yeah, you're going to have haters and critics and things like this, but it doesn't really matter. It's only because they're not doing what you, what, what you are doing. Um, and there's opportunities in which we as an organization, you know, Carly as, as you know, a mutual friend of ours, we're, we're 
fairly busy, I believe, as organizations, we need to showcase these, these projects. And the best way to do that is to, is to video them, is to four-dimensional scan them, is to take uh, professional images. These are things in which we, we would use this, we are using this as an opportunity to catch up on the marketing that we should have done you know, years ago to then repurpose that content for years and years and years. You know, I've worked with people like Lauren Fryer. I did a couple of her offices with Alex from Megarmi. I did three of his offices. This is just journeys that companies are on, and we're, it's no, no different to what we're doing right now. So mm-hmm. from our company perspective, yes, is it costing money every month? Absolutely. But do we need to keep doing it so that when we come out of this, that we're in a position that people remember what we were talking about? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's got to be that investment. Yes, we've had to, similar to yourself, we've had to uh, streamline the business. We've had to become more lean. But has it affected the business productivity? No, it's just, a, it's just been, uh, it's been an inst- uh, instigated um, uh, efficiency within the, within, the, within the business, within the overheads, um, which I had started to look at in November when I was doing these various uh, coaching and I'd gone to America and listening to to various people uh, within the past year, uh, the timing was was fortuitous, similar to what you were saying about, you know, about January, February. You just had a feeling that something was going to happen and that something needed to, something needed to change. So it's going to be an interesting summer because summer's, at the best of times, summer's quite a difficult time anyway. It's going to be an interesting summer. We don't know what's going to happen during the summer because no one can go anywhere. No one's going on holiday. So does that mean that business will carry on? Will it be? My, my, family is, my family is concerned because even though my wife's parents, which is where we tend to settle for, for a few weeks, certainly my wife and the children, they'd have to isolate. Now, the isolation isn't an issue because they are literally in the countryside. So that's, that's not necessarily a problem. But returning to Qatar, as you said, we have no idea when these borders are going to open. And then will my family need to self-isolate when they return in late August, ready for the school year to potentially start? Yeah. Where will I then go? You know, yeah. Am I going to have to stay in a hotel? Because I'm staying here in the summer. I'm, I'm not going back. I was ne- that was never our intention. Um, uh, we've got a, a family trip due to Scandinavia, to, to Lapland in December. So it was always the plan for, oh, me, to, nice. yeah. for me to stay. Uh, that's at risk. You know, we never know. We never know how long this is going to last. So, we shall. We shall see. Um, you mentioned earlier that you listen to podcasts, and I've written it down. What does SLJ listen to? What podcast do you listen to? Oh, I listen to Tony Robbins. Yeah. Uh, I started um, listening to um, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Yep. Robert Kiyosaki. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I listen to, uh, let me, let me just uh, have a look at my list. Audible. I listen, I listen to, I listen to Audible. I, I listen to audio books. Um, let me see, where's my, uh, so I have a routine in the morning when I'm doing, uh, when I run on my running machine, I, I listen to half an hour of an audio book. Uh, I'm listening to the power, the book called power. Mm-hmm. It's a fascinating book. Yeah. <laughs> how how people use power to gain and influence uh, people, and it's uh, most of the time in the old age old ages they just used to kill people. But uh, <laughs> it's kind of a bloody uh, bloody book. But um, yes, I uh, I've got real estate um, podcasts, real real estate investing because that's something that um, I've never. I always ignored, um, but as you know me, I'm always learning, and uh, it's the one thing now that I'm I'm getting interested in, and um, I want to be more knowledgeable rather than you know take people's uh, advice. I want to know more about it before I even go down that road. So yeah, um, yeah. So I'm listening to podcasts. Um, I listen to. Uh, Russell Brand, he's he's got a good podcast. Um, Mindset podcast by uh, I think his name is uh, what's his name? Oh, come on. Advanced Selling Podcast, um, the Project Life Mastery Podcast. Um, 
TED Business Podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of uh, that one. This old marketing podcast. I've got a recommendation for you because I know you're an early bird. Um, yes. But it, it's, it's, a, it's actually a lovely book to, uh, to listen to. It's called The 5 a.m. Club. Robin oh, Sharma. yes, no. Yeah, but yes, but I know that's funny because I was doing that whole practice and then someone says, oh, have you listened to The 5 a.m. Club? And it's just like, well, I'm already doing it. <laughs> but it's actually a reinforcement message because uh, I was I was doing it as well. My my body clock's kind of changed at the moment. I'm working sort of later at night and then up later in the morning. Because he um, did the uh, he did the book um, with the Ferrari, wasn't it? Um, Robin Schwarm. Uh, hold on, I've got his book Robin somewhere. Sharma. Yeah, but yeah, no, I I've been. Um, let me just have a look at my library. Hold on. Another another good one. Another couple of good ones. Um, just for the uh, ego. Ego is the enemy. Uh, Ryan Holiday, and the dip by Seth Godin. The dip is is fantastic. I'm about halfway through that, and it's obviously when when entrepreneurs and SME business owners get to that point in which they're they're so I don't know dejected, disgruntled, and you know at that point, how do you pull yourself out of that uh, that vortex of uh, of being it in was, the lowest, the lowest send, point. Send me, send me the powerful. list. I've got sure. uh, Robin Sharma with his books. I've got the greatest guy, the greatness guide, and um, I've got two of his. But yeah, I just I really enjoyed the Five AM Club because it was a story. Um, it wasn't just a, a narration. It was actually a, it was a bit of a plot and uh, uh, some some influential characters. There's a bit of a love story in there as well. But the lessons are sort of dropped in there very casually um, into the plot, and I really enjoyed it. I, it was probably about four months ago that I finished it, so I'll probably listen to it again when things start to start to move forward. Um, you're obviously very social, active on social media. Um, I was having a look at uh, some of your, your pages, and I guess that goes back to what we were saying about staying at the forefront of, of people's minds. Um, how are the podcasts? The podcasts have been running for four or five years now. You've got uh, Your Onion, uh, Doha Heat, and Steve Mackey has launched uh, In The Game. How's, how's that going? Well, yeah, you're on your, um, Doha Heat was launched in 2014 and we've, um, we've had various hosts for that. But, uh, you know, the reason why I started podcast was because having experience of um, being in a production company before that, I always felt that you're disconnected from what was going on in the community. You're always looking after the client. And when you have a podcast, it gets you back in touch with what's going on outside in the community whether it's a business podcast or whether it's a community podcast so that's why doha, doha heat was launched and the fact that there was always negative press about doha that um yeah yeah it you know it, it was always <laughs> negative there was nothing positive about it and right, i wanted to nuts. showcase the the good people that actually lived here and yeah. gen genuinely wanted to invest their time and money into this country Mm -hmm. um and that's why of, of which we have done we yes. have done you know my my yes, mum so. gives me a bit of a verbal clip on the ear when i say i'm going home and when i leave uh, i leave the uk and i come back to Qatar. you know Qatar has been my home for <laughs> for 12 years and uh i think the hardest part of being here is the transients of of friends and colleagues and contacts you know leaving more than more than coming i don't think there's as much of an influx as there used to be um, the embargo in the past three years, it's going to be three years in, in three weeks' time that the embargo uh, started. Um, we don't see any major changes in that at the moment. Obviously, COVID is going to further delay those, those talks. Um, it had some positives in which it stopped uh, UAE organizations coming in, but it also stopped the influx of people and experience. Uh, into uh, into that business community, as you as you said, and people just refrained from um, from coming. But it's going to be an interesting few years. Any plans to uh, to venture elsewhere, or is is Qatar for the foreseeable? I, I understand what you were saying earlier. It's a difficult time, but if it's a difficult time here, it's going to be even more difficult elsewhere. There's no network that we have created um, outside of Qatar, so it's very difficult to go and start somewhere else. 
the long term is is still Doha and still Qatar for for the Stefan Lindbergh Jones family. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we Thank love you. it here. You know, the kids were born here. Uh, this is our home, and you know, like you, we've invested time, effort, and money into this uh, country, and um, and it's still an exciting place. It, as I always said, it's like the Wild West. There's so much opportunity still here. There's going to be opportunity still um, one, during this virus as well as coming out yeah. of this virus. Uh, yeah. It's not going to stop. Yeah, it's, it's an exciting place. And, it, and, it's, and the beauty of Qatar is the fact that, uh, you know, the local Qataris have put their heart and soul into their country and uh, it's a nice place to live. It's, um, and... I like being part of it. I I always, you know, there might be, there wasn't much to do in the early days, but it, that's got more and more and more. There's plenty of stuff going on now. Um, and business, there's always been opportunities. And I, yeah. that's why I'm excited about looking at other potential opportunities as well as, uh, you know, keeping uh, Ginger Camel going. What would you say? Because you're right. There's a lot of there's a lot of negative press, and it really frustrates both of us with the lack of context around um, certain stories. And it tend, it does tend to come out of the the UK press quite a lot, uh, a lot of the time. The most recent one that that really got my back up was the industrial area situation, where at the start of certainly what was happening here regarding coronavirus. Uh, we have within Qatar, we have, let's say, designated areas where uh, certain demographics will reside and work. And the industrial area is, of course, one of them. Now, the area is improving from a structural perspective, oh, the platforms, the new yeah. roads, uh, the, the, the resurfacing, the new factories, the civil defense is getting better, the conditions are getting better, but it will obviously take time. And I remember reading an article in The Guardian that said that it was a virtual prison, that people were being stopped from leaving their, their streets, they weren't allowed to walk, they were being crammed into rooms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I can see from your reaction, I don't know if you saw this article, but I, I, I chatted about it with, with various other guests and, and with colleagues, and not that we need to justify this, but what would you, what's your reaction to that? Why do you think that the media are, apart from being media, why do you think Qatar gets such a bad rap? And if you may have noticed earlier in the week, actually Singapore um, has had a similar situation in which, again, blue collar workers from Nepal and Bangladesh had, have been employed in a similar manner in Singapore to run their construction industry. And there's a number of uh, fatalities, there's a number of cases in Singapore, yet there is zero negativity against uh, a country like Singapore versus what we see here. Why is that? Well, there's always that jealousy factor, isn't it? It's, it's um, what they've got and uh, we haven't got it or we lost this. So we've got to see where we can pick holes in, in their setup. Uh, it's always been the way, isn't it? It's always that um, the way the press works. It's uh, let's see. And, Positivity and good news never sells. So they're never going to do any good news. It's always, well, let's uh, try and report on bad news. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's is all that, I is can that say. Is that something that can change? Do you, uh, you put something, focus on the positive news. This was uh, a few days ago. Focus on the positive news and not the negative, and we'll get through this with a smile on our face. And obviously people taking to, to Facebook Lives and doing videos and trying to portray uh, uh, actually positivity and, and uh some not happiness but just uh changing that aura of negativity and, and again I, I speak to my wife about this all the time if you engross yourself in negativity and you look every day at the news and you look every day at the figures on the on the local app and you see the cases and you see the fatalities then what do you expect absolutely people are drawn to such negativity and again this is a very generic sort of question statement why? Why are, we, why are we so engrossed in negativity instead of actually turning around and say something good and positive and happy? 
because we're not of COVID. because a lot of people aren't really in the here and the now they're literally you know they're engrossed in their their own problems whether it's in the past or worrying about the future but they're not actually focusing on what's happening to their lives now and so they get lost in the whole news and they get pulled along on this negative whole news journey and they don't really understand what how that's affecting inside this so then they get pulled down with it and then they're gossiping to their friends about it and it, it's just a whole cycle of negativity and if if they actually stop themselves and took a breather and just stood back and went hold on what how is this affecting me you know how is it affecting when i uh, react to my kids because I'm getting stressed with the fact that this whole negative news is affecting me. So then I take it out on the kids. I take it out on my husband when he comes home, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, it's whole snowball effect. But if they actually stopped, took a breather, focused on their breathing, took a few deep breaths just to relax themselves and just went, hold on, what, what am I allowing? To, what news am I allowing to come into my life? And if they focus on more of the positive side of things, of uh, how it's brought people together, uh, mm -hmm. how people are working together, and they focus on that, it would change their whole lives. It would just, yeah, it's... There's not really much of a difference between the spread of COVID and the spread of negativity. Well, this is it. I don't think that it's not really the, um, the COVID that's the problem. It's the, it's the, it's the amount mindset. of press and the negativity that's been going around that has pulled people into a situation where they're, yeah, mentally, you know, it's unstabling them. They're in situations that they're not used to. They're not in control of their own feelings. So their feelings are literally controlling them. Yeah. There was an article that I must, uh, I must, I must actually post this, um, but there was an article that I read the other day that basically gave a kind of synopsis of the last 100 years from 1900 to the new, new latest century and 120 years. And it, it basically gave um, a bit of diarized order into all of the uh, catastrophic illnesses and pandemics that has happened over the past 120 years. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was, well, obviously with World War One and World War Two, you had the Spanish flu and there were literally, you know, 10, 30, 50 million fatalities through certain incidents that had happened throughout the years. I think we're around about, I'm guessing, because uh, I, don't, I don't actually look at it every day, it's about 400,000 deaths globally on this pandemic. Mm. Now, there's various tangents I'm going to go off at here, but it's basically about how, no, I mean, I'm 40 this year, so I, I can't comment on pre-1990 you know, when, when I was a kid. But you look at things that have changed in modern day society. And in my opinion, everything is revolved around the minority, but affects the majority. So if someone's not happy, if 1% of the population is not happy, the other 99% have to follow suit. It could be uh, the, you know, vegetarians and vegans. It could be uh, politics. It could be LGBT. It could be COVID. It could be cleanliness and hygiene. It doesn't really matter. But you look at where we were in the sort of 1960s and 1970s. Everyone carried on. Everyone, you know, bathed and the hygiene was what it was. And we drove and we did this. And, and everyone carried on in, in the norm. Now, you look at bugs and germs and bacteria and the, everyone has to remain clean and we you know, we, we have to wipe our surfaces down and there just seems to be this, this direction that, that, we're, that we're going in, in which we're no longer allowed to do anything that's potentially going to have a negative impact on hygiene or a negative impact on life. Or we're not allowed to say something because we're going to make someone unhappy. And if you are direct, of which I've been known to be a little bit direct in my time, um, then people will... Uh, Will, will comment back in such a way in which you're wrong. Freedom of speech is becoming harder and harder yeah. to say something, or if anything, it's becoming easier to be to have freedom of speech on a social media platform. But there's so many keyboard warriors out there that are just hating on people because they have an opinion 
or they say something. And, you know, I, I, I mentioned this, uh, I can't remember which episode it was, but Lewis Hamilton, very successful young man. Uh, he has a lot of money. He has an amazing passion for what he does. He's fantastic at what he does. And he made a comment to his nephew who was wearing a dress. And it was on social media and bang, there was so much negativity came towards him because he said something that stereotypically has been said millions and millions of times. You can't wear that because you're not a girl. But because modern day society is refraining people from speaking out and saying things in the comfort of their home, okay, maybe you shouldn't put videos up. <laughs> it's just such negativity that's coming back that you can't be an entrepreneur. You can't do that. It's impossible. Why would, why would you do this? Why would you say that? How do we break that mold? How do we break that? There's 1% of the global population controlling 99%. There's 1% infected with COVID, yet 99% are affected. And that's just one example across many things that I've just mentioned. It really, really frustrates me that we as a society are literally bowing down to the minorities. And I have no idea how we change it. Rant no, over. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, social media has made it easier for, for us all to see uh, what's going on in anywhere in the world. And we're, we're, you know, where before, when we were growing up, we only knew what was happening in our local town and maybe on the news we would hear what was going on in the country but now we get to hear about everything that's happening around the world so everything is under a, a magnifying glass in a way and everyone feels that they can comment everyone feels like they're a spokesperson for you know injustice or uh, for anything that uh, gets said on the internet and but they don't really evaluate where they're coming from or what their opinions are so um, everyone has freedom of speech in a way. Um, you can't, you can't, you can't stop people from saying what they want to say. Um, but it's how you take it. I noticed uh, about four years ago, my my social media feed was getting very much full of news that I was, depending on what frame of mind I was in, was very much geared to that way of thinking. And so whatever you're into, whatever news you're into and whatever you believe, you'll be fed that with social media. And it's fascinating. With the, with the algorithms not, the way they are. Yes, they're tailoring yeah, that uh, content to your way of yeah. thinking. Yeah, because they're listening and they're, they're monitoring everything that you do on social media and on your phone, etc. And then suddenly mm -hmm. your whole news feed on Facebook and Instagram is just geared to that kind of news. And I realized that I was going down the wrong, wrong road. And it's only when you become conscious of what's happening, do you, are you able to change your course and your, the way you want to go? And that's what people have to do. They have to stop. Yeah. They have to become conscious and be in the here and the now. And I just want to say, you need to um, read The Untethered Soul, um, which is uh, by Michael A. Singer. Uh, to understand how your your mind works, it's a it's a fascinating read. By whom? Michael Michael Singer. Michael Singer. Noted. Noted. Okay, let's go back to something a bit more fun, um, so we can uh, we can end off. I've, I've actually written this down. I forgot to mention it. Um, uh, I, Ginger Camel. Uh, I can't remember when it was. I think it was. 2013 when I got married because I remember we did the shoot in not only the airport but we did it in yeah, the well, that uh, was the only bit wedding shot. video we ever did and well no there was that but there was uh well that, um, that's very uh very uh, nice to hear and it was a fantastic wedding video but we also you gave me my acting break when we did the there was a business conference <laughs> Um, that was event. yeah. That was the uh, international summit. chamber in, international chamber of commerce summit in Doha. Yeah. 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 So yes, I have uh, I have acted <laughs> in the past, albeit zero zero. Uh, you uh, did audio. very good, Simon. Oh, thank you very much. That's very yeah. kind. I, wa I walked out of an airplane. I performed on stage with nothing behind me, and yeah. uh, I, I met a businessman in the Shark Hotel. So yes, it was uh, it was good fun. It was good fun. 
it was great actually getting to airside with all these securities and trying to get on the plane. Oh, that, yeah. That was I didn't think we were going to pull that off, but we did. Oh, well, we, we had to wait, didn't we, for about two, I think it was about two hours by the time we actually got it, got yeah. it done. Now, there were some issues. And that was at the old airport as well. It was, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. A long time ago. A long time ago. Right, let's have a bit of fun. Okay. You mentioned earlier that you are, um, because of your parents' nationalities, you're half Swedish and you're half English. So I'm going to say eight statements. One is Swedish, one is English. And without thinking, you're going to tell me which one is your preference. Are you ready? Oh, dear. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Don't worry, they're not rude. Okay. okay. Ibrahimovic or Beckham? Beckham. Stockholm or London? Stockholm. Meatballs or Sunday roast? Oh, Sunday roast. Oh, well, I thought you'd say meatballs. No. ABBA or the Beatles? ABBA. <laughs> Pickled herring or haddock? Pickled herring. Oh, interesting. Absolute or a pint of bitter? Well, I don't drink anymore, but... Uh, ah, okay. If you did. Uh, pint of bitter. Mm, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Princess Victoria or Princess Anne? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. Princess oh. Victoria is the next in line, isn't she? Uh, yeah, Princess Victoria, yes. There you go. And then the ultimate one. And I hope your mum and dad are not going to watch this. Um, English or Swedish? What? English or Swedish what? Oh, um, oh that's, that's too oh. hard. Oh, no, you're not allowed on the fence. That's Come on, spit it out. Spit it out. Look, I would love to live in Sweden, but I always go back to I'm grateful for being English. Very good. Very good. What did you have here? You had one, two, three. Well, yeah, it was pretty much even. And then, and then English pushed it <laughs> over the line. English pushed it over the line. Don't show this to your... Uh, is it your mother that's Swedish? Yes. Mother Swedish. Okay. Yeah, that's not around, mother. so he won't mind. So. Uh, uh, okay. just, um, <laughs> Yeah. He's celebrating wherever and, he is. And mum only got her English passport maybe five years ago. <laughs> really? Yeah. Through complications or just, uh, no, just her choice? Just, just uh, because she was getting older and she didn't want any complications. So she went and got her English passport. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Stefan, I've really enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Uh, we've had some serious conversations and we've had some laughs and hopefully we'll have many more in the years to come. We obviously hope this situation resolves itself. Um, keep fighting the good fight. I hope everything um, works out with Ginger Camel. And uh, this has been uh, This Is Qatar. Thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Yeah, I'm glad you got your, your arse in gear and uh, <laughs> finally started to do this podcast. <laughs> Well, I read a, I read a book saying uh, "Start now and get perfect later" by Rob Moore. Absolutely, just, that's always just, been my philosophy. Just start. You know, I've been dying to I've been dying to buy uh, a, a tripod. I've been dying to buy like a lapel microphone, but nothing's open. I can't get I can't find anything anywhere um, because of the situation. So well, yes, it, the aud the audio will improve, but uh, it, we've had some good feedback so far. So uh, if you listen, I, know, I greatly if you appreciate it. If you listen to my audio at the beginning, it was uh, dire. I think uh, it it just went, it kept on phasing in and out, and it's just a horrible listen. But uh, yeah, you just got to start somewhere. Start and get well back. done. Thank you. Thank you yes. very much indeed. And all the listen, best to you. Talk soon. Yes, and you. you stay and safe. And to you and your family. All right. Thanks again. Take care. Yeah. Bye bye.